Y'all ready? Y'all ready? Y'all ready? Y'all ready? ready? Welcome to the Upside Down Smiley Show where we talk about real life but we don't take life too seriously and we hear the stories of everyday people. My name is Shireen and I have Vina here and today yeah. we're going to talk about depression. Cue the intro. to me <laughs> and um, express wanting to talk about depression. I'm glad we're talking about this. You know, I've done a couple other episodes on mental health. The important part about our discussion today is having the conversation and being like more open and just normalizing these kinds of conversations. She came here from Minnesota. Um, she was in town and came straight from the airport. That's what's beautiful too. Like you came here, you've been watching my content mm -hmm. and you felt compelled to share a little bit about yourself and now you're gonna share it with more people. Mm -hmm. And I think that should be more normal. And so do you wanna share a little bit about your, your story? Yeah, okay, I'll give you a little like background about me. So mm -hmm. I was like born and raised in Minnesota. Um, I love Minnesota by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Grew up where there's like a lot of like non-Indian people. Like we have a community but it's mm -hmm. like very small. So like yeah. I went to school where it's like, I was like the only Indian girl in my grade. Like, yeah. and I think there was like four Indians total, including my sisters. It's like two of them in her. Right. School. And did you did you notice it when you were that age? Yeah, I okay. think so. And I think I struggled with it. Okay. So like when I was little, like I think I struggled a little bit with the idea that like I was like different and mm -hmm. like um not wanting to be different. Not wanting to be different. Mm -hmm. And I was kinda like embarrassed that like my parents were different and like I couldn't do things like the other kids and stuff and yeah. like and you notice those differences. Yeah. Right? I think at that age you notice how different your you parents are. And are, then you, you want to be like the white people. <laughs> right. Like, yeah. And so like, um, yeah, I struggled with that. But I was like pretty academically like well as mm -hmm. a young kid. And like in elementary school I was like one of those kids who like was like in all those like kind of advanced things. And I think in middle school, like I think it was just like way too much for yeah. me. I remember my dad like knew I was struggling. He was like, I think you should like get out of classes but I was so like scared to like get out of it because I was scared of like what people would think and like right. I already had like friends who were honors so I didn't want yeah. them to think that I couldn't do it. I definitely could... <laughs> was in the same kind of situation like when I was in high school yeah. my friend like I had a lot of Indian friends and yeah. they were in like advanced classes yeah. and yeah. I was like I need to do that too and I was yeah. just failing. Kind of like um had a huge social life mm -hmm. and so I think like I compensated my insecurities of academics and just like pushed a huge social I'm life. I'm doing really well in that <laughs> and, part of my life. Yeah. To yeah. so, like make up for it. Like, right. As a, as a seventh grader. <laughs> no, but I feel you. I think, like, I think, I think like, we're so, very similar I in think, that sense. I think like subconsciously I was. And so like I think I didn't want to like face my problems with academics yeah. which kind of caused me to like fake sick a lot, skip school mm. and stuff like that. And like um, my parents were like having a huge struggle bus with me and then like I think it carried on to like high school as well. There's like Indian Malayali kids that you see at other things right and, you know they're like taking all these classes and then yeah. you feel and some of them are like more condescending about it oh yeah and so like not everybody is but then like i would feel like ashamed at around certain people i feel like there was waves of depression during that time yeah for mm -hmm. sure i just didn't want to deal with it and right. i just kept like running away with it for it and like trying to find like other ways to compensate or... i think i had that that same kind of experience like i had low moments when mm -hmm. I was by myself, yeah. but then I'd be like, oh, I'm gonna go hang out with my friends, and I'm happy there. You're so young, yeah. right? So you don't really recognize it, and if nobody else notices it, mm -hmm. then it doesn't really get, there's no awareness of it. Yeah, and I think my parents like knew like there was like something off with me, but I think it's like, you're a teenager. You don't know how to like talk to your parents. Yeah, and you're and, a teenager like, and you're hormonal and, and you're like, moody. And you have this idea that your parents are just, like against you. Yeah. And, like, even though your parents like love you and stuff. Right, but, um, they do. I had like a weed phase in, um, <laughs> in my junior year. <laughs> and then like that's when my parents were like, okay. And then they sent me to like a boarding school and then oh my like goodness, my yeah. senior year and then like I, I'm technically not supposed to tell brown people. <laughs> but no, but we're, we're putting everything out there because that's, that's... We don't, I just don't care anymore. Who cares? Like my parents used to like not, want me to like not tell people that and like I feel I got like, arrested when I was 17. <laughs> <laughs> like who cares? We used to have my friends when we were there. Yeah. We would have like gotten so much trouble. But you're I, also like eight years younger than me. 
<laughs> yeah, you know, we can still be friends, okay? Yeah, we can be friends yeah. now. But I think for me, like, I struggled with my relationship with my parents, and then, like, once I became, like, really cool with my parents, I think I almost felt like I needed to owe it to them. Mm. Like, we've had similar, yeah. very similar stories. <laughs> like, I felt like, felt I felt so guilty. Yeah, yeah I felt you had to make up for it. For it. So mm -hmm. I thought, like, you know, what's the right Indian thing to do? Do something in the medical field, go marry a boy, and then you are the golden child and of your family. Perfect. Yeah. And then it's like everything that you did when you were a teenager, it's done. <laughs> give your give your parents grandbabies and you're good to go. I was in my last year and then that's when I didn't pass two classes and then I was like out of the program and then like that's when like my depression like, completely exploded. And I think mm -hmm. I was like depressed throughout the program. You, you just keep ignoring it because you're like, yeah. I have to study, I have to study. Like there yeah. were multiple times where I was like, I think I need to go see someone or do something, but then mm -hmm. I would like just ignore it and I would just be like I have to study I don't have time to counsel and I don't have time for this and right um, and then like after the semester is over and you pass you're just like oh I'm fine but then like the next semester you're gonna struggle bus again it's like a, then... you're, you're looking to these like moments of validation yeah to like make yourself feel better yeah but really you need to feel better feel it has better. nothing to do with like your outside like, when I didn't pass those classes like it was like my fourth semester like that's when I completely like I completely just like exploded. Mm -hmm. yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember I just like walked in there and I was like, I've completely lost myself and like I mm. don't know who I am anymore. Right, you like almost don't recognize yourself. I've had moments in the past like a <laughs> year and a half, like even when I've been doing these episodes, yeah. when I look super positive, <laughs> I look super confident, where I just like felt really low, like questioning who I was, yeah. questioning the, the decisions I've made, yeah. questioning everything, like am I good enough for this? Like, am I worthy of doing any of these yeah. things? And it's it's all in your mind. Mm -hmm. And you really have to practice that work, that right? Like yeah. the work that you learn from like your therapist. There's definitely moments where I'm, I'm there mm -hmm. and I have to accept it. Mm -hmm. When you don't know how to accept it, yeah. when you don't know how to process it, you just think like, this is my reality, mm -hmm. right? You're yeah. just like, I am just sad, I am depressed. And then you just think that that's how it's gonna be like for mm -hmm. the rest of your life. And I think that's why it came to a point. Like I remember like as I was like, kind of like failing out or whatever, like I, like before it actually happened, like as I was studying and stuff, I was like so miserable and I thought it was like, like I was just like, what's the point of life? Like mm -hmm. why do we have to, like I don't even want to be here anymore. And right. like, it's like then you start having like these suicidal thoughts and stuff mm -hmm. and it's not that I like ever attempted it or like had right. a plan, but you just start to think about, like I remember thinking about like people who have killed themselves and mm -hmm. I'm like, yo, like I get it. This psychiatrist talked about it, like he studied like people who have committed suicide and like he noticed that like um, their brain, like in the prefrontal cortex of their brain, um, which is like a part of the brain that helps with empathy, like is like deteriorated. And, mm -hmm. and it helps with like empathy, emotions, judgments, like mm -hmm. forethought, like that part of your brain is like important for that. And like physically when you looked at their brain, yeah. like it was messed up. Like that's yeah. why it's like, I feel like depression is more than just like, it is our thoughts and stuff, but the yeah. reason why our thoughts- There's some Something happening in your brain. Yeah, the reason yeah. why our thoughts are happening that because there's something like actually wrong with our brain and different than like a non-depressed person. So I feel like scientists still don't like have a for sure grasp right. on what exactly. Yeah, 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 and we're not. We're, we're not either. We're just more just like want you guys to think about it. Yeah. And talk about it and know that you don't need to struggle by yourself. Yeah. Is the most important part. And I yeah. feel like have you felt like you've been able to open up and. Yeah, like I think like in person, I didn't really want to talk about it, but I did. Mm -hmm. Like people would ask like, how's school going? And I was like, I just feel out of nursing school every day yeah. of my life. So I like, st like kind of forced myself to just like be honest about it. Like yeah. I remember I didn't want to go to like any Indian events or like I didn't want to see any brown people. Yeah. Like, and yeah, I did talk to people about it and like you could sense judgment or like from some people or just like awkwardness or like what are you <laughs> like this uncle is lecturing me he's like you're taking so long in school what are you doing and this and that and but it's like you just have to learn to move on like that was I think a huge re contributor to my depression too is caring about what people think my parents were like you don't need to tell people <laughs> you feel yeah. out and like you don't need to tell people like about your depression like especially I feel like my parents especially are like really weird with like when it comes to like brown people it's like you can mm -hmm. tell white people about your problems but, yeah like, <laughs> because the reality is, is brown people are typically judging you more we were talking about earlier it's like the whole you're not gonna get married if you talk about your problems <laughs> but the reality is everyone's going through it I've been like going to therapy weeks because yeah. I just I think for me I realize a lot like I don't have like 
need to learn to like control my mind mm -hmm. and like I think I like care too much about what people think and I'm yeah. so worried about like right. just things that I don't need to be worried about when you think about these thoughts like you have to like like pause for a minute and be mm -hmm. like is this really helping me like is this yeah. valuable is this even true right like, does it actually matter like your mind is like on automatic mode like mm -hmm. this I was listening to this doctor and he was saying these automatic negative thoughts it's like you, that's how your brain has been running for all these years right. so when you're trying to stop it it's like you're retraining your mind you're retraining your mind and it's like turning a ship mm -hmm. it's like it's not gonna turn you know how long it takes for a freaking ship to turn like yeah and it's like you and it'll only turn if you keep like making the effort to so yeah like making that conscious effort and right and it yeah. doesn't always mean like being always positive it doesn't mean always being happy it's just you know you have to be aware yeah. i think this is the biggest thing like being aware and not just being on autopilot yeah. is super important and just accepting like there's going to be moments and you need to talk to people mm -hmm. I've, I've had moments where i just don't want to share because i don't want to be a downer i don't want to be a burden yeah. but you need to because yeah. you really need people in your life yeah. in general but especially when you're in those places because and you know that you know when you're sad mm -hmm. and you know when you're in those like really low moments and you're feeling depressed that you need people mm -hmm. around you but you push people away there's like nutrition stuff that mm -hmm. can help and like yeah working out is working that working out, out? <laughs> yeah. i know they like my therapist says like the number one cure it's like it, it's like better than antidepressants they say and it's gonna take practice and realizing that yeah. like like even though like I feel like I've come a long way, like mm -hmm. I've still seen myself like dip back into it for And that's like, okay. Yeah, and that's yeah. gonna and that's gonna happen. It's like mm -hmm. you have to accept that. But it's right. about like but I have noticed that at least it's like shorter each time. And, and I like, have as well. Yeah, mm -hmm. and it's like you'll you'll realize like eventually like I think before I thought like this is my life, like yeah. this is how I'm gonna be forever. But I am a like, depressed person. Yeah, but mm -hmm. then you realize that like you can just it doesn't have to be if you mm -hmm. do something about it. Yeah. You know? And recognizing that you're not alone um, yeah and you know there's two brown girls right here <laughs> telling you that we've gone through it and you don't need to feel ashamed mm -hmm. and just talk about it and get the help that you need mm -hmm. you need to take care of yourself nobody else is going to do it for you you need to make yourself a priority yeah. and know that That's like true. you are so worthy of so many beautiful things mm -hmm. like you know the changes that you've made in your life i'm sure have like brought goodness to you. Yeah. I'm like such a much more confident person. I'm a much mm -hmm. more stronger person. Being in practice. Mm -hmm. I watch my videos. I watch myself yeah. when I feel like crap. And I watch you too. <laughs> like randomly on YouTube, like I do. And, and you gotta just find those things. You gotta yeah. find those things that make you happy and make you mm -hmm. feel better. And don't focus on the things that are not, are not bringing that to And you. if you don't know how to do that, then like, it's okay to like reach out. Like that's what why I yeah. reach out for help because it's like I knew I knew I should okay. be negative, but yeah. I didn't know how to like get out of my negativity. And like yeah. I finally came to a point where I was like, I, I don't know, how, I don't know how to do this. Yeah, like, ask for help. It's life. It's life. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing. Thank you for yeah. being open. Um, that's what I want. I want people here in my apartment <laughs> just talking about life. You can cry. You can just, you can sit and have people. toilet paper. <laughs> Next. Um, yeah, it works. <laughs> Thank you for so much for watching. Thank you yeah. for supporting this. Thank you mm -hmm. for realizing that it's so important for us to just have conversations. Yeah, and that like everyday people matter. Like your story matters. My story matters. Yay. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>